All right. I uh, want to switch gears because if you were with us yesterday, as it happened, we broke into some live coverage of an earthquake that hit Southern California in San Diego, uh, rattling it uh, with a 5.2 magnitude, the epicenter in San Diego County. Here's the latest this morning now from Liz Kreutz. People across Southern California jolted by a 5.2 magnitude earthquake in San Diego County Monday morning. It's terrifying because you don't know when it's going to stop. And we felt the whole house start to shake. The shaking felt from Mexico all the way to Los Angeles. The vibrating even felt in Palm Springs and among festival goers at Coachella. I thought my friend was just dancing in the back seat, but we just saw the sign shaking. The epicenter three miles south of the small mountain town of Julian. Just had a fat earthquake. Where the shaking knocked liquor bottles off shelves. Glass falling, whiskey, scotch, an assortment of different bottles. This video shows a woman grabbing her baby and running out of the house. At a local school, students taking cover under their desks along with their teacher. Be safe with our head. Even animals reacting. Watch these elephants at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. The herd forming an alert circle, with zoo officials describing it as the animals instinctively circling the younger elephants to protect them from threats. I was just like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Was that an earthquake? The quake struck just after 10 a.m., prompting a rock slide on this highway. It seemed like the ground was moaning and, and, and like you had thunder underneath your feet. In this earthquake prone region, a surprise rattling to kickstart the week. Compared to ones that I've been in before, I felt like this one was a little bit intense. Having lived been through a number of earthquakes having lived in Southern California for um, many, many years, Chris. Uh, and it doesn't, I don't know, you get a, somewhat jaded mm -hmm. to the, the 5.2, you know, talk to me after a sick, but no, but really that, that rattles you. Oh, no, like literally I'm yeah. talking about that. And uh, I want to give a near uh, comparison. So most likely if you've lived here in North Carolina, most of your life, you probably haven't had too many rattles because it's not really as repetitive of what happens over on the West coast. But if y'all remember during the pandemic, I was actually uh, working from home at this point. It was a Sunday morning. It was back in 2020 in Sparta, North Carolina, there was a 5.1 magnitude earthquake and some people as far south as Rock Hill actually felt it. So that really is the best comparison I can have for you. So uh, an earlier package the last time that they had a 5.2 in California was actually back in August of last year, but for us it's been quite some time. So if you witness that earthquake, that's really a similar comparison. The only time that you're really going to have significant structural damage so Jane you can pretty much uh, harp on just as much as me is whenever you have kind of like a poorly built structure right. that can bring it down other than that you might see some cracks and broken dishes that might fall off but all in all it's still a lower end but one thing about the Richter scale every level that you go up so a five to a six a six is actually ten times stronger than a five mm. a seven is a hundred times stronger than a five so it goes up by tens for even stage yeah, it's no joke, really. And I've lived in both kinds of structures. Uh, I've been in, you know, the ones that after, I forgot which year, I uh, forgot my earthquake history, but um, after a certain year, they started building on rolling foundations yep. that gave way. Uh, but I've lived in historical buildings and worked in historical buildings as well. And you feel every rattle. It is quite scary. So under the doorway, under the tables, uh, got that earthquake drill. Luckily, we hear that no one was hurt That's in good. this earthquake in San Diego. Uh, I, I think, because I want to pull up the video, I think the most fascinating thing, and we briefly mentioned it in that uh, news story that we just had, about the alert circle that the elephants were doing. Uh, that they know. This, so this is so cool. This is just an instinct that when something was going on, they start gathering around, and they actually create an alert circle. So they're looking in each direction, trying to find each vantage point, because they see that something threatening is coming. So I thought this is really cool. Everyone's standing guard. This is just something natural built into it's them amazing they have that beacon yeah. and yeah they there it know. is oh yeah look at that gosh they're so smart bump to bump man okay. elephants are are fascinating creatures they really are and they're the only ones that actually think that we're cute 
So just as we Anywhere think, cute. yeah, so uh, elephants, just as we think baby elephants are cute, they actually uh, oftentimes see humans. And I was like, oh, like we would a puppy. So that's Aww. that's one fact that I learned about elephants that, that was really cool. But yeah, you're, you're seeing it right there. Um, that's one thing about these events is that certain scientific things can even teach a scientist. I didn't know about alert circles. That oftentimes <laughs> I've seen like sheeps going in circles. That's usually some sort of paranoid uh, behavior that they'll start banding together. So this is kind of an outside version of that isn't it cool so carlene they think we're puppies they think we're cute yeah they think we're cute and That's we nice. think that they're cute it's a nice mutualistic yeah. relationship yeah. between well, us they're and always elephants. smiling to me see that's why it's always nice to hear <laughs> they think that you're cute. cute so then now yeah. you know yeah, yeah. it's fascinating to look at that though yeah and i i love i was actually just watching videos of baby elephants play and they they're just fascinating so to see that they are also protect one another through their alert circles right. is a really cool thing that came from this but as they mentioned everything's back to normal um so uh, jane i actually want to uh, ask you a counter question sure. since you've been through multiple earthquakes are people pretty much desensitized even for a five at that point or yeah, I mean, I would say a little bit. I mean, I I haven't lived in SoCal for fifteen. No, it's been hmm, almost fifteen years. Now. Same amount of earthquakes, so nothing's but really yeah, changed. But yeah, it's like um, after a little bit that aftershock. It's like oh, it's just an out. You know, a three, a four, four point one. Oh, it's an aftershock. We'll, we'll be all right. But yeah. yeah, there is a little bit of a desensitate. Yeah, and especially uh, yeah. a four. So you're not really no, uh, noticing too much at a four. So here, um, let, let's raise your earthquake IQ. Please. We're kind of doing it all together. So tectonic plates and earthquakes. Uh, most likely you remember what a tectonic plate was from mm -hmm. some age school. I don't know when they teach tectonic plates, so I can't even say fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, who knows. But it's that pink line, that um, fuchsia-looking line that goes along the shoreline of North, uh, North Carolina. Sorry, I'm used to saying that. <laughs> along California let's move to the other coast and one thing that happens frequently multiple times a day is a two magnitude earthquake so all this is what's happened over the last 10 days but as you notice that it has been very active through parts of California but we really haven't had too much go on however zooming in and this is not we're, you can see that one little five that is still on the screen so there yes. it is so and then there's the aftershocks that jane was bringing up only in aftershock about a three but what exactly does that mean so here is your richter scale your earthquake magnitudes as i had just mentioned every number that you jump you jump by about 10 as far as the intensity goes but then the amount of force that comes with it is actually divisible of a factor of 32 we won't get too mathy on you just letting you know that it goes up a lot more as far as the force compared to just the uh, actual strength and rattling. So this was about a five, very similar to the Sparta earthquake that we had back in 2020. At this point, it's some property damage, and about 1,500 of these happen every year across the world. So this is not really a rare event. It's rarer than a four because about 10,000 of those happen each and every year. But looking at how much force is on this compared to others this is fascinating so a four usually noticeable shaking sometimes very light is what it's considered that's about the equivalence of 33,000 pounds of explosives but a magnitude five is equivalent to one million pounds of explosives so that's what i'm talking about mm -hmm. that it really goes up by 32 times if you're talking about the force that's on these and i also want to bring up another point because one of the biggest stories that we had recently was the deadly earthquake that happened over here in Mandalay where they had a magnitude 7.7 .7, and there was actually one in the sixes mm -hmm. that was the aftershock within 12 minutes of this. So going back to our Richter scale, those are considered as a major to a great one. So at that point, you're talking about a billion to 33 billion pounds of explosives, loss of life, billions of dollars in damage. So it's amazing how if you go from each stage, even by a point one, how much force really changes on here. So luckily, this is a I want to say only a 5.2, mm -hmm. but Jane, as you've uh, seen before, if this is a 5.7 and a six, you're talking about a different story because right. then at that point it's more That's likely definitely. damage. Yeah, I was just looking at the latest death toll in Asia with that earthquake. Oh gosh, it's uh, over 3,600 now. Wow. Yeah. See, I mean, you get that in 
uh, you know, a smaller country, mm -hmm. a bit of a third world, and in the city, and it was in the middle of the day, you know, f almost 5,000 people hurt. So we're looking at like 10,000 people mm -hmm. in one way or another. Uh, yeah. Just catastrophic. Yeah, and you ne never want anything close to that Not here in the United all. States. And, and that's what's crazy about this Richter scale is you're talking about a difference of 2.5, but there's such a big increase as you're going from each stage to each stage. So if you see anything with a six plus, that's serious. Yeah. Anything at seven, that's near historic. Now, what's odd about this is there's usually about 18 of those per year across the world. The reason why you don't really hear about them too much is you probably hear more about the tsunami watches because a lot of them happen in the middle of the ocean. Right. And since they're so far in the middle of the Pacific, most likely that they don't really impact land too much. So for them to actually happen in a densely populated area like that, that that's just substantial. So not uh, bringing it back over to Mandamar, but I just really wanted to put in perspective what this one was compared to the deadly one out there. And I, I honestly didn't know that the death toll had grown that much. No, yeah, I didn't either. It's been a while since we checked in, but yeah, just awful. Um, and the cleanup and Oh, all the things, and it, and it being on water, you know, mm -hmm. the, the tidal waves that follow or or accompany uh, earthquakes of that nature. Okay, well, um, Chris. We are looking at better weather here, though. Yeah. Here at home. Yeah, well, I guess we'll transition a little bit here. Yeah, the, the biggest thing about today, and I don't have any graphics prepared, so you're just okay. going to have to look in my, uh, my face. Look into his eyes. Just, 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 just pretend that you're an elephant, and then maybe you'll <laughs> think I'm more favorable. I know, but the crazy thing about today is we have a cold front that's moving through, and that cold front has now increased the cloud cover, but it's also going to increase the winds. So we actually are going to have a substantially breezier forecast. Actually, no, uh, I, I can't help myself i'm gonna uh, stall here Please. jane talk because i actually want to bring up a graphic because i want to try to raise our weather iq Again, uh, I love it. yeah um one thing about winds and this is called the beaufort wind scale so oftentimes i'm going to say things like here today there's a chance for wind gusts up to 35 to 40 miles per hour but what exactly does that mean let's bring up weather one you don't need to see me all right here's what's going on so a strong wind is categorized at winds at 25 to 31 miles per hour. What that actually looks like, at that point, large branches are in motion. So what the Beaufort wind scale does, and this was originated in the 1800s by Sir Francis Beaufort, and mm -hmm. the use was is that he studied winds and its impacts to ocean waters and what it was doing on land. So once you get to winds about 32 to 38, that's a near gale force wind. And a gale force wind, as you might have heard, especially if you live by the ocean, 39 to 40. So today we're going to have a strong to a near gale force gust. So what that will mean is if you put your trash can out, there's a chance that it could fall over. That means trash cans could be moving. But at this point, those taller trees that you think that they're going to fall, but they're just so well rooted, those are going to be swaying heavily back and forth. So I think you're going to see a lot of that on and off. But I, I just want people to be advised. I know that it's going to turn into a nice day. We'll have some sunshine. It's much cooler. It's a colder wind. But these are the type of winds that are sneaky because those branches that might have been damaged by storms or rotting out, you're going to hear some cricks and cracks if you're walking through the woods. So there's going to be a chance some of those larger branches could come down unexpectedly. So I always like to let people know about that. As far as where our temperatures are going after this, this is kind of the bottom. We actually already hit our high temperature for the day where that was at midnight. So this cold front is really throwing things all over the place. But yeah. you can see once we get into Thursday, we're in the lower 70s, low 80s, and then we're back into the mid 80s for this coming weekend so great for the charlotte fc game if you're going to that or uh for hopping bunnies to arrive it is going to be a good forecast next chance for rain not until like next late monday late next monday okay so friday is actually not too bad i thought there might be a a sprinkle or two at the end of the week. Mm -mm, I got rid of it. I said, Bye -bye. no, no, sprinkle. Stay out of here. <laughs> you did that. Yeah, I did it. But yep, you I did. It. You, mm -hmm. you but mean Larry sprinkle. I said Larry could stay. Larry's okay. <laughs> Just the sprinkle out there in the air. All right. Chris Mulcahy, thank you as always. And uh, we raised our weather IQ, our earthquake IQ, wind IQ. Wind IQ. Yeah, we, we can't stop raising the weather IQ We're right here. Smarter all around. See, so, this is what it is. And I'm Almost like elephants. Yep. <sighs> what a callback. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Right. Good to be here, y'all. All right. Good job, Chris. Thank you.